Hi, everyone. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm Miss Sherry from Christ Church Children's Ministry. And as you can see, I'm in a new spot as we travel through God's word and we learn about the prophets that God puts into the lives of God's people to help turn them back to him. But before we dive into what our story is today and why I'm surrounded by what I'm surrounded by, I would love for us to pray together and get our hearts ready for what God has in store for us. Will you all bow your heads and pray with me today? Loving God, thank you for bringing all my friends together to share in your word today. Father, we know no matter where we are, and even though we are not together, that we are together in your love, Lord, that we are all your family, and we are all your children. And God, we just ask that you just help settle our hearts and our minds for everything we've been learning and doing and going and so much around us is changing, Lord. Help us to just settle and rest in you today, Lord. Help us rest in you knowing that there is one thing that's constant in our lives. And that is your love for each one of us. And as we just read in your word today, Lord, for we know it is a living word that it will adapt to our own lives right where we are today, right now. Just help us to just clear our thoughts, Lord, so that we can focus on you. To help settle our minds and our bodies, Lord, to just be open to what you have for us today. And we just pray this in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Well, thank you for praying with me today. And as I was saying before, we are going to continue this traveling through God's word, learning about how God is bringing prophets into the lives of the people of Israel. And we have learned so far that Israel has been split into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And we have the southern kingdom that only has one tribe of Israel in it, and it is called Judah. And we have the northern kingdom of Israel called Israel, and they have the most tribes in it, and the, the part that we will be focusing on today in our story, the northern part of Israel. And as we have been learning, Elijah and, El and Elisha have been the prophets of God, trying to turn the hearts of the people back to worshiping the one true God. Because as we know, the kings have been leading the people astray, and they have been worshiping false idols. And today's story is called Jonah, the prophet of Nineveh. And God is calling Jonah to travel to his enemies, to tell them to repent, to tell them that they need to tell God that they are sorry and they will be worshiping him, the one true God from now on. And I'm not sure if you remember all the parts of the story or if you just remember the one big part, that Jonah was swallowed by a really big fish. But what happened before that? And what happened after that? But more importantly, how does the story speak to you? How does the story relate to you? And you're thinking, Miss Sherry, just because you're sitting around a whole bunch of fish and a big fishing net, how does that relate to your life? Well, I'll tell you how it relates to my life and how you might be able to think about it and how it relates to yours. So I challenge you during this story to put yourself in Jonah's shoes, so to speak. See how you would react and how it relates to how you're living your life now. 
So let's get right to the story and see what happens with Jonah, the prophet, to Nineveh. Before we dive into our story, we just need to discuss our big picture question. Our big picture question helps us frame the Bible stories so we know what to focus on. So here it is. Our question, why should we obey God? We talk a lot about the importance of obedience, but we want to explore the reason behind it. If you don't know why you should obey, it can be much harder to actually obey. God told the prophet Jonah, go to the great city of Nineveh. Tell them to stop doing evil things. The people of Nineveh were enemies of God's people. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh, so he got on a boat heading the other way. God sent a terrible storm and the sailors were afraid. They cast lots to figure out who caused this trouble. The lot fell on Jonah. The sailors asked Jonah, who are you? What are you doing here? Jonah replied, I worship the one true God who made everything. What had Jonah done to make God angry? The sailors did not know what to do, so Jonah told them to throw him into the sea to calm the storm. When they did, the storm stopped. From that moment on, the sailors worshiped the one true God. God sent a big fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah prayed and thanked God for sending the fish to save him. Then the fish vomited Jonah onto dry land. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach my message. So Jonah went. He walked into the city shouting God's message. In 40 days, Nineveh would be destroyed. The people turned from their evil ways. Even the king repented. God decided not to destroy Nineveh. I knew it, Jonah said. You are gracious God. You show mercy to people. You are slow to anger and you are loving. I knew you would decide not to destroy Nineveh. I am so mad. Is it right for you to be angry? God asked. Jonah left Nineveh and made a shelter where he could still see the city and what God would do. God taught Jonah a lesson. He provided a plant to shade Jonah from the sun. Jonah was glad to have the plant. But the next day, God sent a worm. The worm attacked the plant and the plant died. Then God sent a dry east wind. Jonah was so hot, he almost fainted. I want to die, Jonah said. God asked Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? Yes, Jonah said. It is right, I'm so angry I could die. God said, you cared about the plant, but you did not take care of it or make it grow. It only lasted one day. Nineveh? It's a big city with thousands of people. I created them and care about them. Aren't they and the animals in the city more important than a plant? God called Jonah to go to his enemies and call them to turn away from their sin. But Jonah refused. Instead, he ran away. Later, God sent Jesus to his enemies to call us to repentance. Jesus willingly obeyed. Jesus died on the cross to rescue us from sin. At times, it feels like the whole world is just getting worse and worse. We may think about how long ago Jesus went back to heaven and wonder, is he ever coming back? Our key passage is a beautiful reminder that God is faithful. He isn't wasting time. He's patiently waiting so more people have opportunity to turn from sin and trust in Jesus. Let's read 2 Peter 3.9 all together a couple of times 
so we can start to remember our new verse. Let's read it together. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, 9. Let's read that one more time all together. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, 9. Wonderful job. Keep working and trying to commit this verse to memory this week. So the story's refreshed in your mind, right? You remember now all the parts of the story, not just the one big part that you remembered when you learned it as a child. Yes, Jonah was swallowed whole by a really big fish. Is it seem like an unbelievable tale? But it's true, isn't it? You can look on the internet and see if it's happened to other people. Has it? Absolutely. <laughs> but we know that everything in the Bible is 100% true. It's a historical account. God's living word. All true. So Jonah, he was asked by God to go to Nineveh. How did he react? Did he want to go? Absolutely not. Nineveh, Nineveh, I can't even say, it. Nineveh <laughs> was full of his enemies, right? They didn't believe in God. They actually believed in Dagon, 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 a false god who was half fish, half man. So if he was spit up by a fish, they would have taken notice, wouldn't they? That whatever he was saying, whoa, what he just got spit up by a fish and he's man and he's walking around. So they definitely took notice to Jonah when he got to Nineveh. But he didn't go right to Nineveh, did he? Because God said go, he went what? The other way. Now, how could that really relate to you in some way? Have you ever been scared to go anywhere or just really didn't want to do what you had to do when you got there? Just like Jonah did. He didn't want to do this job that God was calling on him. He was scared to go to such an evil place that was full of his enemies. And he's by himself. So not wanting to go to that either because not a desirable situation and an actually terrifying one. So guess what, God? I'm going the other way. Have you ever felt that way ever? That you were like, I'm running the opposite way. I know I have. When Sometimes when God calls us to do something, we think, I am so not the right person. So I'm going this way. You want me to go that way, but see you later. And that's exactly what happened with Jonah. He got on the boat going the wrong way. And can you hide from God? Um, no, you can't hide from God. He's everywhere. He goes with you wherever you go. And he's going to keep poking at you until you listen to him. And in this case, he brought on a big storm. Whoa, we already know that he's awesome at that to the point where it was terrifying the other men on the boat. And they said, who are you? And Jonah says, I am the prophet of God and I have disobeyed him. And God is mad at me. So throw me off. And that's when the fish swallowed him whole. But that wasn't by coincidence. God always works his plan for the good, no matter what we do, he will make it for the good and make his plan 
be fulfilled. And so he had him swallow him whole and spit him up on shore, right? Now, Jonah didn't want to go because he could care less about the spiritual formation of those in Nineveh, right? But he gave thanks to God for saving him and bringing that fish. So when he got to Nineveh, woo, a fish spitting him out on shore, all the people took notice, didn't they? And he said, repent, turn back to God, tell him you're sorry. And what did they do? They repented. Even the king, wow. <laughs> Even the king repented. And how did Jonah react? Oh, he was so upset. He was so mad. He knew that God was going to have mercy on the people of Nineveh. Oh, he wanted them punished. He didn't care about these people. But God taught him his own lesson didn't he? When he was sitting up on that mountain, watching the town to see how God was going to punish those people, and he did not. He wanted to show Jonah, hey, I brought you that plant to shade you, but you didn't care about the plant. Even though you enjoyed it so, you didn't take care of it. So it withered and died. But what did Jonah do? He kept blaming God, right? And God said, just like you cared about that plant, I care about the people of Nineveh. Aren't those people more important than the plant? That I love them. That he's going to keep giving them mercy, us mercy, when we turn away from, from God. That he loves to be merciful. Even people who we think are our enemies, right? Do we always think we're the good guys? Like, I'm the good guy, and all these other people are making bad choices, and they're the bad guy, God. We're the good guys. They're the bad guys. Have you ever thought that in your life? Oh, I'm such a good guy, right? Well, only one person, the Bible says, is the good guy, God. All of us are sinners. And granted, we might not make as terrible of a choice as those in Nineveh, but we often stray from God. God calls us to read our Bible every day, to worship and follow and love him and love others all the time. Do we always do that? We're not perfect. We're not God. So we need to repent just like those in Nineveh. That sometimes God might call us to tell his story to our friends. Oh, Miss Sherry, don't go there. Don't tell me to share the gospel with my friends. It's not easy. They don't want to hear about it. Guess what, Jonah? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's not easy for me to think about how am I going to reach all of you and tell you about God's love for you? It's not easy sometimes. Sometimes it's super fun and sometimes it's hard. But God calls us to do it. And when we lean into him, when we talk to him and we learn about him by reading in our Bible and grow closer to him, God transforms us. He transforms us. He gives us courage in those moments to make good choices. He gives us courage to go, hey, come to Sunday school with me. Miss Sherry's not that bad. <laughs> come, join. You will actually have fun. It takes courage, and God will give it to you. And it might not happen overnight. It might happen little by little, but don't forget that God loves you. He has so much mercy for you and he will transform your hearts, your lives, because he loves 
us so. And that just wants me to give thanks and pray to him and thank him and tell him how much I love him. Will you all join me in a closing prayer today? God, thank you for your word today. As we hear the story of Jonah, oh, we're reminded how you show mercy to sinners, how you show mercy to each one of us. God, soften our hearts so that we can rejoice when you show grace to sinners and to each one of us. Help us to see your love and be transformed by it each day. Give us courage and compassion to share your love with those who still don't know you. Fill us with your spirit so we can obey you out of love and grow closer to you each day. God, be with my friends and their families and their communities. Lord God, protect them. Keep them safe and healthy. And all God's children said, amen. Well, thank you for being with me today, friends, and I can't wait to see you next time. I love you all, and don't forget, our worship for, for kids and our songs are coming up next.